In this video, I want to demonstrate several techniques in scientific glass blowing. Uh, the first is making a butt seal or a straight seal, and then later on, I'm going to make a uh, side seal. First, I'm going to be taking 24 millimeter glass tubing, and all of this glass tubing is borosilicate. Uh, I'm going to heat the end of it, and I'm basically trying to narrow uh, the 24 millimeter closer to 14 millimeter. That way, when I seal the two of them together, uh, it's a little bit easier to get them uh, uh, seated. The 14 millimeter tubing is for a blow hose that I'm going to attach. Uh, now, one of the things I'm going to do off screen is uh, after I heated that 24 millimeter tube, uh, I used the Marver to constrict it down. Now, with this particular video, I'm wanting to demonstrate some of these techniques, but this is really a test video for me, uh, seeing what I can and cannot get away with as far as uh, getting this, uh, these techniques on video. Uh, right now, I've got the camera on my left side, which makes it a little bit awkward for me if I have to shift to my left uh, without blocking the camera or just knocking it off the, uh, the stand. Uh, now, if you notice, what, I'm, what you're looking at right now is a repeat of a previous scene, but I've zoomed uh, and cropped onto uh, the torch so you can see the, the glass fusing together. And I will do that several times throughout this video because sometimes when you're watching a glass blowing video, it's difficult to see what is happening right at the torch, especially if you have two pieces of glass about to be joined together. So that is something I'm going to be looking at in the future to make better videos where I've got different perspectives. I'll have the camera in different positions, possibly more than one camera, so you can see what's going on. So now I've switched to the uh, 24 millimeter tubing. Uh, you can see I have the blow hose hooked up. Uh, now, what you're going to get to see in this video is me making lots of mistakes. Uh, this, again, was me just setting this up uh, as a test uh, video, but I decided to go ahead and turn it into a full video uh, after doing it. I haven't done any glass blowing in a couple months, uh, so you're going to see uh, lots of awkwardness, and I'm not that good to start with. So right there, I just popped a hole, uh, and it's way off center. And now I'm going to struggle for a couple minutes trying to open it up uh, and go from there. Now, a mistake I've made, but I did this intentionally because, again, I didn't want to spend a lot of time in my setup. Uh, I have the piece clamped on one end. That makes it a little bit more convenient for me, but at the same time, when I touch it with the graphite, you'll notice that the piece wobbles a little bit. It moves back and forth. If this was more than a test piece, if this was a piece of glassware that I wanted to use for my research, I would have it much uh, uh, more secure on the rack and I would be taking a lot more time as far as the prep work and everything else within uh, my glass blowing. So right now this is basically me doing some stuff quick and dirty uh, as a demonstration. Uh, and you'll see uh, a little bit later on uh, when I do try and make the side seal, uh, I'm off-center, uh, which is disastrous, but fortunately, uh, I was expecting to be off-center, uh, because again, I haven't done this in a while. Uh, there I am knocking the torch, you know, basically turning the torch off accidentally, so you can see I, I, I'm struggling with this. Uh, but I actually already had a plan of, if I was off-center, uh, of how to fix it, specifically to bring in a glass rod and do that. So uh, what I'm thinking about from a, from a teaching point of view, a video series point of view, uh, is to have uh, mistakes uh, of glass blowing and how to fix them or to patch them. Again, I'm a chemistry professor, not a scientific glass blower, so making mistakes is actually something I'm very good at and have, have lots and lots of uh, experience in, in doing that. So here I am showing, popping that hole, uh, again, zooming in on it so you can see. Uh, there are many glass blowing videos on YouTube that are 
absolutely excellent. Unfortunately, not as many of them are focused on scientific glass blowing, uh, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to make this. Plus, there are a few. Uh, here we go and pop, and you can see I'm I'm off center. Uh, so. Uh, there are quite a few uh, of the uh, uh, scientific glass blowing videos that are on YouTube, but unfortunately, many of them uh, have been filmed years ago, uh, and the quality of the video isn't that good. So that's something I am going to try and make a make a really uh, concerted effort in the future to get as many high quality videos of uh, scientific glass blowing as possible even if my technique isn't that good you can see what I'm doing or attempting to do and go from there scientific glass blowing any aspect of glass blowing can be very frustrating when you're starting because the glass doesn't want to play nice you'll see the glass especially with glass tubing you heat it it starts to cave in it starts to warp on you or do all kinds of other things so here I am using a graphite uh, uh, rod to uh, make my uh, glass hole uh, a little bit more symmetrical and it takes me several uh, several attempts uh, you'll see in a second when I make the seal uh, between the uh, smaller tubing, I want to say the uh, the tubing I'm going to seal onto the 24 millimeter. I want to say it's about eight millimeters in diameter or thereabouts. Uh, I really didn't uh, measure it. I already had some stock cut. Uh, but when I do it, uh, because of just the uh, not being in practice and the position of the camera, uh, I end up being way off center, and that leaves a very large hole. Uh, in, in uh, the interface between the two pieces of glass so I end up having to correct for that by adding more glass uh, so anyway as you watch this video uh, this is really uh, just uh, to demonstrate uh, some of these glass blowing techniques and I will be making more detailed videos of this going forward so again I'll zoom in on this in a second you can see I've stuck the two pieces of glass together right there but you can if you look very carefully uh, or not even that carefully you can see there's a very large gap between uh, those two pieces of tubing like we're talking well over a millimeter which is like a country mile uh, in glass blowing it's terrible uh, but you'll see I will fix it uh, the seal that I'm gonna end up with uh, when all is said and done is not gonna be very good but I will tell you this this seal will be better than anything I ever did when I was a graduate student or a postdoctoral researcher and those seals were good enough from a chemistry point of view to get my uh, research projects moving uh, so as a chemist I do scientific glass blowing as a means to an end I do glass blowing to support my research I don't do glass blowing because it's my job I do it because I need it to support my job and this is something that uh, I was very fortunate to learn uh, these techniques of scientific glass blowing in graduate school, and then a couple years ago, I got a uh, I got additional training at uh, the Salem Community College uh, in Salem, New Jersey, uh, which offered a week uh, uh, long workshop on scientific glass blowing, and that was incredibly helpful. Uh, and since then, I've been essentially just practicing. Uh, watching YouTube videos, reading uh, scientific glass blowing books, and failing quite badly uh, uh, often. So uh, don't uh, get disheartened if you are trying to do glass blowing, whether it's scientific, artistic, and everything goes bad. Uh, it is a learning curve. Uh, if you have somebody to mentor you, that's fantastic. If you don't, watch a lot of videos read uh, as many books as you can on the technique and then practice as much as you can uh, it it's something that you just have to get in there and do it so here I am uh, now uh, patching that hole because uh, I had to do it in two steps uh, while I was moving around the glass I wasn't blowing into it but now that I've actually sealed the hole right here uh, now I can actually use my blow hose and puff into the glass to uh, uh, shape it. Uh, this is something that uh, it's very easy to overheat the glass, puff too hard, and have it distort. 
Uh, and I've done that many, many times where I'm working on a piece of glass, you know, uh, tubing. I heat it up too much and I blow too hard and I end up with this very large blister. Uh, so, uh, again, this, uh, what I'm working on right now, is purely a demonstration, purely a test piece. And it's the kind of thing that uh, my students in the future will be uh, working on projects. But before you do that, you just need to learn these basic techniques. Go into the lab, uh, work with a hand torch, work with a bench burner. And yeah, by the way, for context, I learned using a hand torch when I was in graduate school. The bench burner skills, I picked those up uh, at Salem Community College, and that was a complete new thing for me, uh, a mystery at first, but uh, it took me a while, uh, but I got used to it. Now, uh, what I'm doing right now, again, is glass blowing because I'm working with tubing, but I've actually done a tremendous amount of work uh, in the last couple years uh, of working with glass rod, and what I've definitely found is that practicing gl uh, artistic glass blowing, making glass icicles and ornaments and, you know, other, other little, uh, you know, things, uh, using glass rod will pay off for you at this stage when now you're working with glass tubing and you're doing something for your research uh, or your job or something you know along those lines. Uh, so the more experience you get doing glass blowing, uh, the better you are. Uh, but like I said, uh, you wouldn't know it from this video uh, that uh, uh, my practice will will pay off uh, as disastrous as this starts off uh, I do clean it up quite a bit uh, but this is something where I'm gonna spend a lot of time working to clean up this weld uh, to make it as uh, uniform as possible and as straight as possible uh, another mistake I'm making right here you notice how the tube uh, I'm having to just nudge it back into place uh, again that should be secured or I should uh, pay more attention to holding it into place. As a uh, test piece, again, I'm not, I'm not caring about it too much. I'm more uh, focused on just getting this uh, uh, put together without it, uh, without it breaking on me. Uh, I've had pieces, again, when I was first doing this in grad school, uh, when at this stage, because the weld was so bad and I didn't keep the piece uniformly heated, it would actually crack and just break apart. So again, that can be incredibly frustrating when you're doing it. Uh, so as bad as I am right now, I am light years ahead of where I was uh, much earlier in my career. And uh, this is something that uh, by getting more practice, you kind of get into a rhythm doing glass blowing, and it, instead of overthinking it, it becomes second nature. Where I could have saved myself a tremendous amount of pain and suffering is in the stick. When I put the small tubing onto the larger tubing, if I would have focused a little bit more and got it centered perfectly, then I wouldn't have to go through all of this where now I'm just trying to clean it up a little bit. Uh, so. Again, that's something that it just, it's just practice. Uh, but I do want uh, all of you to see this video, warts and all, uh, because when you start doing scientific glass blowing, if, if you're taking one of my classes or doing research for me, uh, or just want to learn it at, at Radford, you will make mistakes. You will have things go sideways on you, and it'll be very frustrating, very annoying. But as you can see from this video, if you just keep working at it, you, you can uh, uh, be less terrible uh, at, uh, at glass blowing. Uh, again, uh, I'm a chemistry professor. Uh, I'm teaching chemistry students. The goal is not to become master glass blowers. Uh, the goal is to become proficient in scientific glass blowing to do what needs to be done in the research laboratory. And that is critical because these uh, glass blowing skills uh, traditionally were taught to chemists, and when I mean traditionally, I'm talking you know pre 1960s. Uh, but over the last several decades, uh, scientific glass blowing has become more and more rare uh, as far as being put into the curricula of us. Uh, I did not have scientific glass blowing when I was an undergraduate. I picked up uh, a few. Uh, techniques when I was in graduate school, not because I wanted to learn glass blowing, but because I needed it for my research. So 
Uh, this will be one of many videos I hope to be putting on this channel in the future going through uh, techniques and you know uh, pitfalls, mistakes you make, mistakes I make, uh, and how to how to get around them as best you can. Uh, this this torch I'm using, this hand torch, is uh, brand new. Uh, it's a, a Bethlehem uh, surface mix torch. It's an absolutely fantastic torch. Uh, I am not doing it justice right now uh, for oh wow that looks terrible uh, for how bad this weld is. So this is a case where uh, I have uh, an excellent set of equipment for glass blowing. Uh, now I just basically need to get better uh, to fully utilize them. And uh, one of the things, again, as a student uh, at Radford University, uh, taking uh, inorganic uh, chemistry uh, or uh, just wanting to learn these techniques, uh, it's my goal to pass on as much of the uh, scientific glass blowing knowledge I have uh, to each of you. So with that, I will uh, end this video. Thanks for listening.